Welcome everyone that uh, is uh, following the uh, presentation online in this moment and uh, also the people that uh, will uh, hear the presentation later on. So we are very lucky today to have uh, uh, Luke Herman who is mm, actually talking about uh, the rock art of Kyrgyzstan, an overview of it. Uh, probably it's uh, something that is uh, new to most of us because it's not a very common uh, area uh, of the world and not uh, even a common area for traveling. Uh, so it will be very interesting for us to discover, uh, we are sure, many new information and many new things about uh, this uh, rock art tradition. Uh, a short introduction to Luke Herman. So he was born in Belgium. He studied art history and archaeology at the University of Liège, and his supervisor was Marcel Ott, that uh, is a friend of ours, a friend of the Centro Camuno di Studio Preistorici. He's a known uh, um, uh, like uh, yeah, archaeologist that studied a lot of Paleolithic uh, rock art uh, in particular, and he also made a presentation with uh, with us. Um, um, after his studies, uh, Luke Herman went to Austria uh, to write his PhD in medieval archaeology and started to work as a team manager for excavations. Since 2010, he has been working on Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan rock art, which is, of course, uh, what he will present today. He wrote about 60 to 70 papers about the rock art of that area some of which actually have been published uh, published in Expression, which is a review uh, whose general editor is Emanuele Nati, uh, that is, of course, the founder of the Centro Comuno di Studi Preistorici in 1964. So welcome, Luke Herman. Thank you, Matteo, and thank you to the Centro Comuno di Studi Preistorici for inviting me. Uh, so today I'm going uh, to present before you before you start i would just yes. like to to remember to the people that are following uh, that they are welcome to write on facebook if there are some comments or some uh, questions mm -hmm. uh, please feel free to uh, write them down and uh, we will discuss them with uh, luke herman either during the presentation or at the end depending by the the thematic that you that you will write about, but uh, we are welcome to to make comments on uh, on live. Thank you, Luke. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going to present uh, this PowerPoint about uh, rock art in, uh, in Kyrgyzstan. Um, uh, why it doesn't? Ah, okay. So, um, so Central Asia is located so here in this area, and Kyrgyzstan, it is uh, this country with um, so it is uh, south of uh, Kazakhstan, it is west of China, and also China is also uh, south, and uh, southeast you have Tajikistan, and uh, west of uh, Kyrgyzstan you have uh, Uzbekistan. And the main town of, Kazakh, of uh, Kyrgyzstan is uh, Bishkek here. As you can see, uh, Kyrgyzstan is a mountainous country with a superficie of uh, almost 200,000 uh, um, uh, kilometers, uh, square kilometers. So it means uh, two thirds of uh, Italy and six million inhabitants. It is a mountainous country with uh, some peaks um, above uh, 7,000 meters. And, uh, and in uh, Kyrgyzstan, you have also a very big uh, lake. It is uh, Isikul Lake. Uh, there is not so much uh, publication about uh, rock art of, um, uh, of Kyrgyzstan. There is um, something uh, who was, uh, which was published in 2000. One, uh, it is a general presentation of uh, rock art of Central Asia, and uh, one part is about uh, Kyrgyzstan and uh, about the main sites of Kyrgyzstan. A second uh, publication was done, was written in 2011, uh, actually also so general presentation of the main sites of Kyrgyzstan. 
In order to understand or see, or, uh, the rock art of Kyrgyzstan, you should also actually understand the rock art of Kazakhstan. And about Kazakhstan, there is more paper, for example, uh, a big book by uh, Alexei Rogozhinsky about uh, Tamgali. Tamgali is a rock art site uh, uh, which was recognized as, uh, by the UNESCO as World Heritage. Uh, in German, you have um, a, a book uh, by uh, Irina Schwetz. And uh, more recently, you have uh, also a book by uh, Novozhinov. It is also mainly about Kazakhstan, but it is also a good introduction to understand the rock art of uh, Kyrgyzstan. And I also wrote uh, a small paper two years ago, uh, but in French. Uh, about more specific topic about uh, the interpretation of rock art, I uh, strongly rec um, recommend uh, by Andrei Rosvadovsky, uh, Symbols Through Time. Uh, it is from 2004, but it is uh, still interesting, really still interesting to understand uh, the rock art of uh, mainly of Kazakhstan, but also of Kyrgyzstan. And I also wrote um, three papers about some topics uh, in uh, rock art in, uh, of uh, Kyrgyzstan, music and dance, uh, published in Expression. Uh, Matteo uh, talked about it and about sexuality also. And I also wrote in French, uh, something about uh, sun and bull cults uh, in uh, the Bronze Age. So the main sites of uh, Kyrgyzstan are located uh, first uh, on the northern shore of the Isikul Lake. It is the number one here. Uh, there are uh, many sites on this northern shore. The main sites are called Ornok, Bayet, Cholponata. Another area, it is Karakol here, south of Bishkek in the mountain. A third area, it is uh, near the town of Kochkor, with two sites, Karato and the Koksai. Another area, uh, it is the Karakol Valley in, uh, in the province of Talas. Uh, it is the second uh, site uh, with, with the name of Karakol. Karakol in uh, Kyrgyz means um, a dark uh, valley. And, uh, and you have actually in uh, Kyrgyzstan many Karakol. So you have the Karakol region here, south of uh, Bishkek, the Karakol Valley, here by number four. But you have also so a town of Karakol in the Isikul uh, area. Uh, another uh, important uh, valley with uh, many petroglyphs is the Kenkol Valley, um, near Talas, near the town of Talas. And south of the town of Talas, in the mountains, you have the Urmaral region, with two important sites of Chintash and um, and in uh, central Kyrgyzstan, um, very really two or three important sites, Saimalutash, one and two, depends if it is one site or two sites, and uh, south of uh, Saimalutash, you have uh, Sukdebe. So uh, before uh, talking about this uh, different site, I just would like uh, to put the question, actually, what is a petroglyph uh, in uh, Kyrgyzstan? It is, uh, uh, when you have statistics about petroglyphs in Kyrgyzstan, it is really problematic. For example, here in Saimalutash, you have this line. Uh, so perhaps it, it is one drawing, but you can see that, you, uh, that the rock was intentionally pecked many times. And the question is, uh, what should we do with this? It is one petroglyph and so on. Uh, and it is really intentional. You can see the same here on this rock. It is not cup marks. It is uh, pecked. Uh, I, I forgot the, uh, the number of, of times, but uh, about 200 times perhaps. And uh, um, it looks like cup marks, but uh, they are not cup marks. They are more superficial, they are more finished like cup marks, but actually it is rock art, but no drawing here. The same here, uh, it's more complex. You have uh, this, this anthropomorph with a dog on a leash. Uh, a bull and here uh, some dogs and uh, probably a wild boar. But you can see that on this rock, you have also small dots. So it was intentionally packed. And if you uh, take the, the drawing of, uh, this, uh, of, of these petroglyphs, you see that uh, all these small dots uh, disappear. So, but I think we should take them into account. Exactly like here, for example, we can see that the intention is to pack this uh, rock with uh, all these uh, dots. So, and uh, what is a petroglyph? So for this reason, I, 
I use uh, sometimes the concept of graphics unit and of drawing just to uh, to make the difference. And if you take the, the number in a Chachi K, you have uh, more than 8,000 graphics units with all these dots, but only 7,300 uh, drawings. Saimal Attach 2, it is uh, really important, uh, more than uh, 25,000 graphic units, but only, only if you really want, only uh, 8,000 uh, drawings and so on. So um, uh, for this reason, uh, it is a question, what is a petroglyph? And I think both, uh, both numbers should be given to understand what is exactly the site in uh, Kyrgyzstan. I developed this idea uh, in a paper published last year here. Um, you have the reference here on the same page. So about the main site, I'm going to uh, present firstly the northern shore of the Isikul. So the Isikul is really uh, a big lake, uh, 6,300 uh, square kilometers. And uh, on this area, you have uh, you have some fields and some uh, uh, settlements, uh, uh, small villages or bigger uh, towns sometimes. And after you have a very big area uh, with a moraine. And uh, on, the, on uh, these areas, you will find uh, some uh, big rocks like this one with uh, petroglyphs. Uh, the problem of the, of the sites on the Isikul area uh, they are actually endangered. Uh, they are still used by pastoralism. Uh, it is not really problematic with pastoralism, but I wa just wanted to, to show that uh, they are still used by, uh, by pastors, with, uh, by shepherds. Uh, but the main problem is that uh, um, these uh, this, uh, petroglyphic uh, fields are destroyed. For example, here, to have new agricultural uh, fields. For example, all these rocks. Uh, uh, on these rocks, there were some goats, and uh, in this area, there were also some kurgans and so on, and everything is uh, destroyed to, uh, for, agri for agriculture uh, purposes. So you have also everywhere new constructions. Uh, there are some, uh, some depictions of camels here on these rocks. And, um, but also, for example, here in Karaoy, uh, they built a storm water basin. And uh, for example, on uh, this big rock, you can see that uh, there is a goat, a depiction of a goat uh, uh, from the Turkic period. And um, so on the northern shore of uh, Isikol, uh, many of the sites are actually in danger. The second area uh, I'm going to, uh, to present is here. It is, uh, the, it is uh, Karato. Karato uh, is actually a mountainous region with, uh, with rock art between uh, 2,200 and 2,500 meters above sea level. And uh, on uh, the slopes of these uh, hills and on the summit, you have uh, some uh, uh, rock art on uh, outcrops. Uh, for example, sometimes really small, you can see here uh, this uh, battle scene with this archer um, shooting on a man, and it's only a couple of centimeters or several seven centimeters. Some uh, compositions are much uh, bigger. For example, here, this composition with uh, some goats, but also here with uh, people and with a uh, neurotic uh, depiction. Uh, the uh, next area, it is the Kenkol Valley here, number five. Kenkol Valley, it is the same. You have a valley uh, with a stream, and uh, this valley is still used for agricultural purposes. And on the slopes of these hills, you have outcrops with uh, rocard. Uh, these hills are between 1,600 and 1,800 meters. So you have the climate of, uh, of this area. It is uh, the steppe. It is uh, Central Asia. In Central Asia, it is a mountainous region, but it is really warm in, uh, in summer. And, uh, and you see uh, almost uh, uh, no trees, uh, only small vegetation. It's raining. For this reason, uh, you have uh, um, little bits of vegetation, but it is a step. 
and uh, so small outcrops with um, with uh, rock art. Another example here of a uh, hunting scene, and you see that the arrow is going uh, through uh, the goat. Uh, another example here, um, I don't know exactly here, this is an anthropomorph, perhaps uh, with arrows inside it, I don't know exactly, uh, it is from the Bronze Age. Uh, the next uh, site, it is here, number six, it is Jaltiraktash. Jaltiraktash is uh, high in the mountains by uh, 2,500, 2,600 meters. And you have here um, these rocks, here, these rocks with the dark patina. And uh, on these rocks, uh, you find uh, many petroglyphs, mostly from the Iron Age and the Old Turkic period. Here, for example, it is here, this uh, deer, uh, it is um, uh, more probably from the Iron Age. I'm not so sure about it, but most pro more probably about the, uh, from the Iron Age. But uh, this warrior is from uh, the Old Turkic period. A very, a very important site is uh, number seven, it is Saimalutasha. Saimalutasha is uh, accessible only a couple of weeks uh, in the year because the rest of the time it is under snow and you have to uh, go through a glacier to reach the site. It is between 3,100 and 3,400 meters. Uh, the rock art site is just here at the summit. And you have a second site by Saimalutash. You have to cross here a pass. And uh, on the other side, you have a second site. So it is the main site, Saimalutash 1, with a small lake. Uh, and uh, here by the glacier, you have uh, moraines. Here you can see the main moraines with uh, many petroglyphs. But actually, you have petroglyphs in all this area. Uh, even if you don't see the moraines, uh, there are petroglyphs everywhere. Here. So it is the lake with the main moraine, but uh, you have also petroglyphs here. And uh, we don't know exactly how many uh, engraved rocks are present in uh, Saimalutash 1. Um, I documented, but I'm not finished. I documented uh, uh, more than uh, so, um, uh, 3,000 uh, um, rock uh, engraved rocks. And uh, on each uh, rock, you have uh, 10, 20, or 20 uh, petroglyphs. So it is really a, a huge collection of petroglyphs here in Saimalutash 1. For example, here, the hunting scene from the Bronze Age. Uh, uh, here's a hunter with a bow and the arrow going to, to the mountain goat. Another example here also with a hunter. And uh, here are some goats. But also uh, in uh, Saimalutash, we have a lot of lines uh, which are not interpreted until now. Saimalutash 2, it is so uh, a plateau also with moraines everywhere and, uh, and the same uh, kind of uh, depictions of goats. Uh, uh, so I'm going to uh, show in this uh, presentation a lot of petroglyphs from, from Saimalutash. Uh, the last site I would like to present this year, number eight, Souk de Beu. Souk de Beu, it is between 2,900 and 3,060 meters. Uh, you have engraved rocks a little bit on the slope, but, but actually mainly uh, on the top of, uh, of this uh, mountain. And uh, here, for example, a battle scene. You have uh, two archers, one here with, uh, with the bow, and the second bow and the second archer. Um, yes, and uh, the, uh, the petroglyphs in the Suc de Beu are, um, are have a strong uh, patination, are uh, not so well conserved uh, um, as uh, in Saimalutash. In Suc de Beu, you have also this uh, rock with uh, cup marks, with uh, uh, 70 cup marks. What is really uh, important because usually you, not, you don't have so much uh, cup marks in, uh, in uh, Kyrgyzstan. So about the chronology, um, I will divide uh, the, the petroglyphs in uh, seven uh, periods of time. The first one is the Bronze Age between uh, uh, 2500 and uh, 900 BC. Second period is the Iron Age uh, between 900 and 200 BC, but for some uh, uh, researchers, it could go to 200 after death. 
the third period is the so-called Arctic period. So uh, Arctic uh, tribes came from uh, Mongolia through, uh, um, through Siberia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and after they went to Uzbekistan and uh, north of Iran and uh, Turkey. And uh, the Arctic period in uh, Kyrgyzstan, it is, it is a bit uh, between 700 and 1300. After that, you have the so-called Oirat Dzungar times. It is also a population from Mongolia, but a Buddhist, a Buddhist population. Uh, they uh, stayed only uh, 100 years in, uh, uh, in uh, Kyrgyzstan between uh, 1600 and uh, circa uh, 1750. The so-called ethnographic Kyrgyz period, um, it is just to make a differentiation because Kyrgyz people are actually a uh, Turkic population, but uh, you have the old Turkic period and uh, the medieval and uh, more recent uh, ethnographic uh, Kyrgyz period between uh, um, uh, 1700 and the Sovietization of Kyrgyzstan. So it is the next uh, period in the 20th century, the Soviet times, and, uh, they are and the shepherds in the mountains are still uh, doing some, uh, some, uh, uh, some engravings uh, since the independence of Kyrgyzstan. For the datation, the datation is interpreted by stylistic comparisons, uh, similarities with objects, depictions in tombs. Um, mainly in uh, Kazakhstan, you have uh, depictions in uh, tombs from the uh, Bronze Age. So you can, uh, um, the tomb is, uh, was done with, uh, uh, with rocks. And uh, on these rocks, you have uh, petroglyphs, actually, what is really interesting for us uh, for the datation of uh, the petroglyph. Uh, sometimes small sculptures, a depiction on ceramics. Uh, after that, you can associate it, uh, the petroglyphs you know, on panels and to interpret, it, to interpret them. The, uh, you have also a superposition of petroglyphs. So it is a relative datation, but it can give uh, uh, um, an idea if it is uh, from the Bronze Age or the Iron Age. You have also a kind of stylistic evolution, but uh, it is more problematic. And uh, also problematic is the presence of graves or settlements at the same sites, uh, at these sites. Uh, it is problematic because actually, uh, more or less, uh, you have all period from the Bronze Age to the uh, Soviet times uh, at uh, each uh, site. For the chronology, uh, the chronology was mainly done by uh, Kazakh and uh, Russian researchers. Uh, by Pakov, Maria Shev, by Senov, and so on. You have the list here. Uh, main uh, mostly these uh, these books are in uh, in uh, Russian, but sometimes also with uh, English translation inside of the book. Uh, so uh, during the Bronze Age, uh, during the Bronze Age, uh, the main topics are uh, sunhead deities. Uh, if it is really deities, it is a question, but. Uh, um, I agree with this uh, term of sonnet deities. You have also many anthropomorphs, other shamans, worshippers. It is a question. Uh, you have hunters, you have erotic sense and battle sense. You have many symbols, lines, solar symbols, labyrinths. If the cup marks are from the Bronze Age, it's a point, uh, it's a question because uh, I think that there are, there, were, uh, there are also some cup marks in the Iron Age and the Old Turkic period, but uh, uh, okay. Um, also from the Bronze Age, we have uh, chariots and wheels. You have uh, some weapons. It's not so much, but we have isolated weapons on a uh, axe uh, on a, on the rock. And um, among the animals, really often you have bulls, caprids, goats, uh, wolves, and dogs and horses. Sometimes, so two to five percent of the depiction: deer, felids, camels. And uh, quite rare, we have some birds, uh, bear, wild boar, and snakes. So uh, here in Saimalutash, you can see on this rock uh, this uh, depiction. So here we have actually uh, a wolf and here a deer with the antlers. But you have this, this uh, kind of anthropomorph with two uh, bear, uh, legs, uh, so the body, and instead of the head, you have this. Uh, this depiction that we interpret as a, a depiction of the sun. 
And for this reason, uh, this, kind of, this kind of depiction is called sunhead deities. Another example, it is uh, really clear here with uh, the legs, uh, with uh, the arms and uh, the head with uh, eyes and, uh, and mouth. And instead of uh, hair, you have a kind of sun rays. Here, much more difficult to see, uh, two legs probably, and the, the sun who is, uh, which is uh, uh, taking uh, everything. There is another similar example in, uh, in Kazakhstan. With this, you can see another anthropomorph with a bow, and on the head, there is a kind of, uh, of a headdress. Here it is the same. You have uh, an anthropomorph with the head, legs, uh, legs here, um, arms, and uh, you see this big representation of the head, and you see that it is associated with worshippers. For this reason, uh, it, it is not the same. The, the only case where you have this uh, kind of sun head deities associated, uh, the sun head associated with worshippers. For this reason it is interpreted as a deity. Another example here in Souk de Beu, here are the, the arms, the body, the legs are here, and uh, instead of the head, you have uh, uh, this, uh, this circle with uh, some dots inside. Uh, just to compare, you have the same kind of depictions in uh, Kazakhstan, for example, here in uh, Tamgali, but uh, uh, we don't see here the sun rays there, some in uh, Tamgali, but here you have also some circles around the head. This sun head, uh, if it is a sun head, but this sun heads are sometimes associated with uh, bulls. Uh, for example, here with the bull, you have the bull here with the uh, horns, and here uh, the head, the body, the legs, and uh, the arms. So you find the same association of sun head with bulls, uh, for uh, uh, also here in uh, Tamgali in Kazakhstan. Uh, bull depictions are really often in the Bronze Age. One example here from Saimalutash. Uh, here two examples from uh, Chachike in the Kenkol Valley. Uh, here another interesting uh, bull because you can see that there is a dancer. Here, the head and uh, the body, the leg, there is a dancer on this bull. Uh, sometimes there are also uh, depictions of uh, hunting scenes with bull. You have here this really big bull in the middle of the scene. Here you have an anthropomorph with a spear. You have another anthropomorph here with a bow. Another one here on a chariot, also with a bow. And um, a fourth one here, also with a bow, and all are uh, hunting uh, this bull. And on the same panel, you have here uh, four dancers. So uh, here, the bull with this anthropomorph, with this uh, spear. Uh, here, you can see the chariot and uh, the anthropomorphs. Uh, it is not so clear, but here it is uh, the bow, and here is the, the arrow. And you have these four dancers. Uh, in this case, uh, by these dancers, you can see that the uh, two of these four dancers have uh, longer hair, probably here breast. And uh, by the anthropomorph without uh, uh, this longer hair, you can see here clearly a phallus. So probably, so uh, for me, it is a depiction of men and uh, women. Uh, anthropomorph, uh, um, sometimes you have uh, some uh, strange representation of anthropomorphs holding a solar symbol. Here, the solar symbol is not on the head of this anthropomorph, but it, it, we see that, uh, that it is uh, held by, uh, by this anthropomorph. Something else here, uh, you can see uh, this, uh, all these depictions. And uh, here you have an anthropomorph, and he is also holding on his head this big representation. If it is a sun or a mirror, it is uh, problematic. But in any case, uh, interesting to see that uh, he's holding something. Uh, if it is a mirror, it reflects the light. So it is a little bit like the sun, actually. You see here something else. 
um, this anthropomorph is also holding a solar symbol, and you have here many worshippers. But on the same rock, you have here a sun head, because here it is not holding the sun, it is uh, directly by the head. So it is this depiction of this anthropomorph uh, holding, we can see here the arms holding this solar symbol. And uh, just on the same uh, uh, rock, uh, actually, uh, just uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the next rock uh, is one and a half meter. You have uh, this uh, big uh, bunga bunga party uh, with uh, uh, with all these uh, erotic depictions. Uh, so, uh, in every sense, so, so in every position. So. Uh, erotic depictions are um, there are some erotic depictions, not so much, but uh, there are some. Another example here, in also in Saimalutash one, uh, I think it is clean enough, I don't have to explain. And uh, this one, and this one is also interesting because uh, behind uh, the two people having intercourse, you have a worshiper. So um, in Saimalutash, you have also uh, some uh, plaves. Uh, so here you can see uh, some bulls. And here the plough and uh, a man behind it uh, for uh, by the agriculture. So it means Saimalutash it is by 3,200 meters. So it is not a depiction from the reality of this site. So it means in this case that we are really in a, a cultic area. Uh, other examples of uh, plough or chariots here in Saimalutash. Uh, with uh, two bulls. Uh, here it is a chariot with the anthropomorph on it. Another one here it is a plough and uh, with a nitifalic man, so probably a uh, relation with uh, fertility. You have something a uh, little bit similar in, uh, in Valka Monica, also with an erotic depiction. Uh, and uh, actually, in Saimalutaj, there is also another um, plaf with an erotic depiction. Um, just, uh, I don't have the picture here, but uh, uh, here a chariot, you can see here the anthropomorph on it. The wheels and uh, the horses. Another one from Saimaltash 2. Uh, so quite clear with the uh, horses. Uh, and these chariots are sometimes with warriors. For example, here in Chachikeya, you have this anthropomorph with an axe, with an axe, and also with a spear on this uh, chariot. So it is uh, a war chariot in this case. And uh, battle scenes, uh, you have some battle scenes a uh, little bit everywhere in uh, Kyrgyzstan. For example, here in Chachikeya, two anthropomorphs with uh, very big spears. Uh, here in Karato, I already uh, showed it before. This is a uh, man shooting on another man. Or here uh, in a Saimalutash. So um, the main, the next topic, it is all these uh, solar symbols, wheels, and so on. Uh, I'm going to show some examples here from Saimalutash, mainly from Saimalutash. Uh, here from Saimalutash 2. Um, so uh, it is uh, difficult to interpret them, but uh, to say just it is a solar symbol probably, but uh, what is this line coming uh, inside it? Uh, so um, you have also here, uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know, a plan uh, of the, the ground of a house or something like this, I don't know. I just don't know, we, I just uh, document this kind of, uh, of uh, petroglyphs and uh, perhaps when I have enough of them, I, I try to interpret them, but uh, it's really difficult to, uh, to give an interpretation. So this kind of fences, uh, here another fences, uh, another fence and uh, you can see also a kind of enclosure with a bull and here it is called uh, glasses, this, uh, this line with two, uh, with two rings at the extremity. Uh, you have also a lot of uh, lines, uh, river, mountains, I, I really don't know. Uh, I think uh, uh, you should have a different interp interpretation. Uh, uh, sometimes it could be mountain, sometimes it could be river, but it's not uh, so clear. Uh, as a 
geometric uh, uh, symbols. Just we, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's this kind of labyrinth. Here another kind of uh, labyrinth. You have also some kinds of uh, similar labyrinths in, uh, uh, in Kazakhstan, actually. Uh, hunting sands uh, are really frequent. Uh, here, for example, in Chachike, I already uh, showed it, but uh, uh, it is really nice with this uh, arrow through the goat. Here, um, you can see a man with this bow and his an animal face. He's also a quiver and is shooting on a felin. It is not a wolf in this case, it's a felin uh, with a uh, round hair. Uh, another case here uh, with this uh, small anthropomorphs and this, with this uh, very big uh, felin. Um, you have many depictions of goats and of also of canids. Uh, here, for example, probably a, a wolf uh, predating or going to predate a, a mountain goat. Here another goat, also from the Bronze Age. Uh, here the predator is behind a deer. Here just a predator, what is it for a predator? It is impossible to, to say it is, a, it is nothing uh, realistic, it's not realistic, uh, but <laughs> clearly it is a predator. <coughs> um, in uh, Saimalutash, you have also some uh, depictions of uh, anthropomorphs with a dock on a leash. For example, here behind this uh, deer. So, um, I don't know if somebody has a question about the Bronze Age, and if not, I'm going to talk about the, the Iron Age. Uh, in the Iron Age, you have mainly uh, animals uh, which were depicted, and uh, among the animals, mainly caprites and uh, dogs and wolves. You have also sometimes deer, horses, camels, felines, and very rare, uh, uh, very rare uh, wild boar and birds. Uh, in the Iron Age, we have many hunting scents and pastoralism. In contrary, uh, there is no more sun head deities. Uh, with few exceptions, you have no more bulls, you have no more erotic scents, but there are still uh, intercourses between two animals. We have no more war sense, no more weapons, no more chariots and plows. So, uh, and for the Iron Age, it is uh, really um, easy. In many cases, it is really easy to uh, to attribute same uh, to attribute the petroglyphs to the uh, to this period, because uh, you have in uh, Kurgans, for example, here uh, from uh, Russia, uh, this uh, these objects here, a deer with folded legs. And you find just the same in uh, on the uh, petroglyphs. For example, here in Karato, another example here from Kazakhstan, from Tamgali, also this uh, uh, this deer with folded legs. Uh, another kind uh, in Pazirik in Russia, you have uh, also some animals with uh, curves inside of the body, inside the body, and you have the, just the same in uh, in Kyrgyzstan. For example, on this uh, big rock. In the Cholponata on the northern shore of Isikul, you have also this uh, goat depiction with this uh, uh, volutes, volutes uh, uh, and uh, or curves inside the body. Next, another example here of uh, Cholponata, you can see them here from Saimal Tashtu as well. Uh, it is not really volutes here, but you have this uh, same kind of thing. Um, in uh, Kazakhstan, uh, they found uh, from the 6th or 5th century BC, these uh, eagles, you can see here the uh, A, the head of the eagle with the beak inside the body. And, in, uh, and you find just the same kind of rock art, for example, here in Samaru uh, this uh, here the A and the beak inside the body. Uh, as a uh, uh, rock art uh, depiction from the uh, Iron Age, for example, uh, this strange horse, uh, horse but with uh, horns. Here it is uh, a horse, it is uh, no doubt about it. And the main sites with, um, uh, with the so-called uh, Saka Siberian style, 
is actually in a Jaltirak Tash in the Talas Valley uh, with uh, many depictions of bulls. Uh, I said that uh, bulls uh, uh, disappeared from the uh, by the Iron Age, but in a Jaltirak Tash by the Sakasubian style, you still uh, find some uh, bulls. Another example here. And uh, you have uh, the body with these curves. Sometimes the curve is also inside the body and uh, the, uh, also by the horns. Another example here, it's really clear with these uh, volutes inside of the body and also to depict the, the leg. Here it is um, uh, probably a, a bear. Here a goat and uh, a deer but a little bit later. Uh, another goat here also with the same kind of uh, volutes. Here, an interesting uh, depiction of uh, deer. And inside the deer, you have two depictions of uh, goats. And you see that these goats have uh, folded legs uh, as we saw uh, before. A fantastic animal. It, it, uh, what is it? <laughs> I don't know, it's just a fantastic animal, but from the same period with uh, the body, with calves, really typical from this uh, Saka Siberian style. Here, a bear, uh, um, uh, bear, sorry, another bear, and um, something else by the Anron Age, it is uh, really big depictions of uh, animals, mainly of deers. Uh, but on the northern shore of uh, Isikul. So, uh, for example, this uh, deer is uh, more than two meters uh, long and uh, about uh, one meter fifty high. It is um, smaller, but it is uh, still uh, circa one meter. Uh, also in uh, Isikul, another site, it is called uh, Tamshi. Here, uh, another site uh, from uh, the easy cool another shown it is uh, ornock, but with uh, felines, but also uh, one and a half meter long. So after the Iron Age, uh, I'm going to talk about the old, old Turkic period uh, between uh, 700 and 1300. You have, um, like in the Iron Age, mainly caprites, which were depicted uh, among the animals, but you have also sometimes camels. Uh, more camels than in the um, previous periods. Horses, uh, canids, and deer. Rara are felids and birds. Among the anthropomorphs, we have uh, warriors, many warriors in battle sense. You have hunters and riders, and some riders uh, are uh, with a flag. Uh, something to, uh, uh, typical for the alternative period, uh, it is a clanic sign. So each uh, uh, clan or each tribe had uh, um, a sign uh, which was uh, engraved on the rock to say, it is my property. Uh, these signs are called the Tamga. It is really uh, good for us as archeologists because when we find this Tamga, we can uh, put them in relation with some uh, petroglyphs and uh, attributes of the petroglyphs of the old, old Turkic period. Something else in the old Turkic period, it is uh, some inscri ins inscriptions, the first inscriptions, the runic inscriptions. Uh, in uh, Kyrgyzstan, um, 48 uh, were documented until now, uh, mainly in the region of Talas and in the region of Kochko. Um, about the technique or something uh, particular for the Arctic period, you have some palimpsests. It means that uh, you have the uh, older petroglyphs were renewed and also new petroglyphs were included uh, on older sands. And uh, about the technique, you have also the so-called graffiti technique. So this uh, uh, thin superficial lines uh, to uh, uh, sometimes not always, but uh, thin superficial lines uh, to uh, to depict uh, animals or anthropomorph. So here on the Institute cool, also some deer, very big deer. Um, uh, here, a very big uh, camel, so one and a half meter high. Um, and uh, camels, uh, um, we have much more camels, for example, riders on camels uh, with a dog. And uh, sometimes these camels are, uh, are in a kind of a caravan. We should not forget that uh, the Isikul area was on the Silk Road. Here, for example, another, exam uh, another example of this, uh, of this uh, caravan. Uh, of uh, so this uh, all these uh, camels uh, near each other 
uh, on the easy cool, but it is in this case uh, a site from the southern shore, not from the northern shore. Um, hunting sand, you have still hunting sands here, two archers with a goat. And uh, here, rider with a uh, sword and uh, with a flag from Saimal Tashtu. Um, this kind of riders are quite rare in uh, Kyrgyzstan. There are much more such examples in uh, Kazakhstan. Here, uh, this uh, graffiti technique, you see some small lines to depict here an anthropomorph with an, uh, a bow and an arrow. Uh, and another anthropomorph, a rider on a horse. There are a very small bulls. Uh, each bull is circa uh, four centimeters long. And uh, here another example, this, um, in, during the Altogif period, this petroglyphs, this graffiti petroglyph are sometimes really uh, small. Here you have also an archer, uh, and uh, it is only uh, three centimeters from a um, high. Here you can see behind this, uh, this goat, you can see here with these thin lines, uh, a horse. Also a couple of centimeters, six or seven centimeters. Here you see this deer. Uh, you have here the, the, the scale, so uh, it is uh, four centimeters, this, uh, this deer. Just a couple of thin lines, uh, it's very small. Uh, it is, uh, and they are difficult uh, to see, uh, not only because they are small, but with the patina, it's really difficult. Uh, here also a goat, um, some 10, 10 centimeters long. Uh, a site uh, I didn't document, uh, it was documented by um, Joldoshov, but also Tavaldiev in his Koksai. You have these riders, but with a very beautiful depiction of birds. And uh, uh, with these riders, you have here, for example, a tamga, this clinic sign. And here you can see a runic inscription, a runic inscription. So as a tamga, for example, here in Karato, it is this clinic uh, sign. And uh, here are some uh, tamga from Karato. Some, some of them uh, look, uh, look like uh, the, uh, an omega, the Greek letter omega. So, uh, for example, here another tamga from Jaltiraktash, uh, this uh, circle with a cross, but actually uh, behind it, there is uh, uh, two riders uh, with a small graffiti, so almost uh, very difficult to see. Uh, it is, uh, but <laughs> they are there. <laughs> And uh, also in these uh, thin lines, you have uh, runic inscriptions, for example, here from uh, Chachike. Uh, it is six by uh, four centimeters. Um, mainly these runic inscriptions uh, are just the name of uh, men. Uh, in this case, it is written Kara, member of the Ten Arrows clan. So just uh, here, uh, um, you can see the letter, it is uh, much clearer, uh, but uh, uh, as you see, it's uh, quite uh, difficult uh, to see. Another example of Chachike, it is here. You have um, uh, five runic uh, letters here. You can see them. Uh, six, uh, sorry. One, two, three, five. Yes, uh, six. And uh, it is just the name of, uh, of a man. It is Chulik, uh, seven by six centimeter. Um, so another kind of rock art in Kyrgyzstan, uh, it is um, just a few pictures to, uh, to say, uh, to, to talk about it. It is called a ball ball. Uh, it is this uh, big uh, depictions of, uh, very big depiction of a uh, head um, on uh, tombs. So here are some, uh, sometimes also with, uh, uh, with the main part of the body and uh, arms. So the Oirat Zungar times, uh, um, so around uh, 1635, uh, Mongolian uh, population uh, invaded uh, a part of Kazakhstan and of Kyrgyzstan, and they stayed uh, more or less 100 years in, uh, in, this, uh, in, in these both countries. And um, the particularity of this uh, Oirat or Zungar that uh, is that uh, they, they were uh, Buddhist. 
And for this reason, they uh, left some uh, Buddhist inscriptions, the Tibetan mantra of Mani Padme Om, but also some depictions of Buddhas. And in Kazakhstan, you can also find some uh, stupas. Here, for example, in, um, in Isikata, uh, it is a depiction of a Buddha. And you can see that uh, it is still the object of a cult. And uh, some people uh, put uh, this uh, golden uh, uh, painting on it. Uh, of, uh, um, yes, for, for cultic reasons. Uh, here, uh, this very big inscription, it is on Mani Patmeum, it is from Tamgali in Kazakhstan. Uh, in uh, Kyrgyzstan, there are not so much, but uh, I found one last year. Here, it is a nine by 10 centimeters. Uh, I'm not sure that it is only on Mani Patmeum. Uh, there are much too much uh, letters here. Uh, I'm still looking for a translator <laughs> for it. Uh, so. Uh, so the next uh, period is the so-called uh, Kyrgyz ethnographic period between uh, 1700 so, uh, and, uh, and the beginning of the Sovietization of uh, the country. You still have many animals, mainly caprids, sometimes horses, canids, deer. You still have all some clinic signs, the Stamga. The Stamga uh, were done until uh, 1900. Uh, you have also some depictions of yurts. Uh, the uh, yurt is a kind of a big uh, tent by the nomadic population of uh, Kyrgyzstan and of Central Asia. You have uh, anthropomorphs, uh, riders, hunters, and you have also in the 19th century, uh, this, uh, until uh, circa 1930, you have also Arabic uh, inscriptions. Here, for example, a rider, you still have this uh, technique of graffiti, but you can see that uh, uh, stylistically it's completely different. Uh, you have this uh, rider uh, on a horse uh, with uh, a spear, probably. Another rider on a horse here is uh, with a falcon uh, for hunting uh, purposes. Here, a depiction of a yacht. It is uh, four by, uh, by five centimeters, I think. Uh, a hunter here with a very big arrow. Uh, this kind of arrow is typical for the Kyrgyz ethnographic period, sometimes also by uh, the Old Turkic period, and uh, with a goat. And here, a horse with uh, some uh, Arabic inscriptions the name of the shepherd and uh, he said that uh, he is uh, the son of uh, Kyrgyz by uh, here is another name of a shepherd also with a horse. <coughs> As uh, uh, Tamga, you can find here in Chachike, uh, this Tamga uh, which belongs to the Chingizid uh, Kazakhs um, and so it is uh, there from the 18th uh, 19th century. So also interesting for us. Uh, um, um, there are very good researchers in Kazakhstan about this time gas and uh, we can attribute them. Uh, it's uh, good for, for the attribution. Uh, during the Soviet times, um, you still have uh, animal depictions, caprites mainly and horses. You have um, depictions um, tied to the communist uh, uh, our um, time uh, period, so portrait of Lenin, communist symbols. You have for the first time uh, depiction of landscape, mountains, clouds. You have some depictions of yurts and of houses. Uh, you have uh, uh, no more chariots, but you have cars and airplanes. And you have also uh, Cyrillic inscriptions. For example, here, this goat in Chachike. Uh, you can see also with the patina that it is much more recent. Uh, Another goat here uh, with, mount with the mountains, and here uh, um, two letters in the Cyrillic uh, alphabet, a portrait of Lenin here on the Isikul. So no more sun head deities, but uh, Lenin at least. Uh, communist symbol here, the red star. Sometimes you have other portraits of people. And uh, here, um, reminiscence of the uh, Olymp Olympic Games in Moscow in 1980. 
So uh, it is here from Kazakhstan, uh, but uh, it is a very good example with the mountains, the sun, an airplane, uh, and the yacht. And uh, Syriac inscription, and you have uh, similar uh, petroglyphs in Kazakhstan, in uh, Kyrgyzstan, sorry, uh, with the sun, uh, mountains, some clouds, probably here two trees, and the yacht. You have also in this uh, period, uh, people coming back from the um, um, uh, um, service. So they went uh, in the army uh, for a period of two years. And when they came back, they depicted uh, their uh, as a soldier. Sometimes they also wrote their name and uh, where they were in, uh, in Russia for, the, uh, for this um, service. And, uh, and in which years. Um, and for example, this one was, uh, it, um, uh, was near the, the sea. And so it was uh, for him uh, really important. For probably first time he saw a boat and uh, uh, lighthouse. And, uh, it, and it is here in the middle of the mountains. Um, difficult to talk about uh, Kyrgyzstan without uh, talking about uh, vodka. So we still have uh, depictions of, uh, of a bottle, at least. Uh, I don't know if it is a vodka, but probably. Um, and you see 1951 uh, uh, with a rider on a horse. And uh, amongst the uh, new uh, Tamga or solar symbols, uh, you have uh, this kind of depiction. So um, people uh, have. Uh, new uh, solar symbols if we want or new uh, clinic signs <laughs> with some mercedes and audi uh, so uh, and uh, i thank you for your attention uh, we thank you we thank you luke it was a fantastic presentation very clear a lot of beautiful pictures it's amazing how many sites you you have been on um, mostly considering that uh, um if i understand well you are uh, one of the few people that had the, uh, the opportunity or the uh, will to to visit those reasons so i was actually very impressed that uh, you are so few people uh, that have been studying such a vast territory uh, geographically in time uh, because uh, you just show that the the tradition didn't uh, end with the iron age but it lasted, so which is very interesting. Also, it's um, common for um, Balcamonica. We also have a, an interesting uh, uh, fr uh, frequent people that frequented the rocks uh, with very different uh, values, very different uh, um, ideas in mind. So it uh, really is paralleled by the complete change of the of the themes that are depicted, which is which is uh, normal um it's been very a, a, a travel some some depictions were amazing as always this is one of the reasons why we like uh, the field of rock art it's uh, such an artistic uh, uh, also domain where all the populations could uh, um, express themselves and uh, for for conveying meaning but also beauty so actually i found a lot of, i found a lot of of beauty in the in the, the depictions uh, to, to are very interesting the anthropomorphic sun like the sun anthropo but just incredible the the imagination of population uh, how can uh, how can give birth to imaginary figures that are uh, uh, interesting for their meaning but also for their something that we cannot define that is art uh, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It was also very interesting to have the concept of Bunga Bunga connected to rock art. Actually, it's the first time I hear it, <laughs> which is, uh, which is uh, okay. <laughs> very interesting. And, uh, and actually, yes, we have a, almost the same depiction. I, I have some notes that I took along the presentation. I have some, we, we have uh, practically the same depiction, as you said, the Etifalic men following with the um, how you call the machine for uh Platform. yes for the ground that's uh that's very incredible also how the the traditions the symbology can uh, 
either be inborn, either can travel in uh, in a long distance. That's uh, that's very interesting. So about the sun, uh, you know, also Anati for what concerns the the stele, notably in Valcamonica, he makes a very strong uh, uh, interpretation of uh, of uh, figures that are uh, represented on, on stele and uh, a symbology of the sun. Uh, do you think there is a connection between the two ideologies? Um, I don't know if there is a connection between the two ideologies, but I think uh, mainly in the Bronze Age and perhaps also at, uh, the, the early Iron Age, you have just a community of ideology. It, it, uh, you find this. Uh, you find the same topics of chariot and so on also in uh, Sweden and uh, also some uh, solar symbols in Morocco. And uh, actually everywhere, I think that uh, uh, people were uh, dependent on the sun. And for this reason, uh, they, uh, I think they, they, uh, it was normal it, uh, that uh, they should uh, um, take the sun as a kind of, uh, of, uh, of God. And in the old Egypt as well, uh, you have also the, the sun by, with uh, Aton and so on, or Horus and... Uh, yes, of course. I think it is a community of... of uh, community of it is a human, humankind, so... <laughs> yes, yes. For agriculture, you know, that, that, that is also very interesting because in the Paleolithic time, there is not much interest for that because it was mm -hmm. completely another economy. Um, I I was also very curious while you were talking. Also, at some point, you presented the the sheep herder. Um, how is the um, feeling of local population towards their rock art? Is it a pride? Is it a, um, indifference? Is it um, maybe even not hate, but like a tentative to forget? Uh, uh, the past. Uh, How is the relationship? It, it is. Um, it is difficult to say about it. Uh, <clears throat> I have the experience in uh, Kazakhstan uh, that I met a shepherd, and the shepherd was uh, was uh, sleeping in the rocks, so among the petroglyphs. And uh, and I was near of uh, his uh, sleeping place. It was uh, it was not uh, sleeping at this at the time, but he saw that I'm coming. Uh, near his sleeping place, so he, he came uh, to me and he asked uh, what I am doing there in the, in the rocks and why uh, am I going, uh, where, why uh, am I taking pictures of the rocks? And I just uh, explained, uh, yes, I'm taking uh, pictures of the, of the petroglyphs, of the drawings, and he asked uh, which, uh, uh, which drawings? And, uh, and actually he was sleeping there, but he never saw that uh, there were many petroglyphs uh, around, and he began to uh, to look for them with me and say, hey, it is just a goat like mine and so on. Uh, so it is uh, very strange uh, uh, that uh, they are not really aware of, uh, of the petroglyphs. They just don't see them sometimes. Um, in other cases, they see, they, they see them and uh, we see that they try to reproduce them. So you have um, among the new petroglyphs, uh, on, the on the same rock, uh, or on another rock, this, uh, this kind of the same deer or, or the same goat. Uh, so uh, uh, they, when they know about it, they are proud about it uh, uh, because they know that it is uh, 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 their past. And, um, and there is also in uh, Kyrgyzstan a kind of uh, um, a political uh, will, willingness to uh, to use petroglyphs to uh, have, to, to 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 build the identity. Probably, uh, when you come from the airport to uh, Bishkek, at the entrance of Bishkek, you have a big uh, monument, and on this monument, you have uh, many uh, depictions of uh, petroglyphs. So. Uh, it that is, was my uh, next question, actually. Yes. How was the political um, um, uh, feeling about that? Mm -hmm. Because that also makes a difference, I think, also for you, because uh, I, I think you have to come into contact with 
policy in in a way or or the other because uh, uh, i mean you are in another country so mm -hmm. I, I think you you have to you know not have maybe permissions uh... well, not really because uh, actually it is um, um they are still uh, in the um, uh, they are still influenced by the uh, by the nomadic uh, uh, way of life before the sovietization i would say and for them, it is uh, quite normal that uh, tourists are going uh, through the mountains. And uh, and uh, I mean, so long I, I don't dig uh, graves or something like this, I just uh, take pictures of the petroglyphs. And for this reason, I don't uh, need uh, any permission. It's just uh, like uh, any tourist who would go uh, there. And uh, it is not a problem for the for the shepherds when uh, they are meeting me. They asking they they ask what I'm doing and um, the main as well, and uh, many times uh, they uh, invited me uh, to to drink uh, tea uh, after that um, in their uh, farm or house, and uh, so it is. Uh, they are not really aware about it. Um, we it's uh, strange. We can see that there is a kind of political affirmation of the petroglyphs, but on the same time, the the petroglyphs are there and not really well protected for the main important sites yeah so you you were mentioning when when you meet the, the the local people while you are in the field and before we started the presentation Luke was saying that uh, when he goes there for documenting the the, the petroglyphs he goes in uh, solo expeditions very brave he sleeps in uh, in tents and uh, it's uh, also a very a travel uh, very adventurous actually uh, so you have a uh, possibility to, to really meet the local nature local population that has to be a, a strong part of the of your study yes it is but it's also uh, exhausting uh, it is really warm in the summer and uh, you need water you need uh, seven or eight liters water uh, uh, so you just also need to know where as uh, the springs uh, and so on, and uh, sometimes it's pretty difficult with, uh, with um, uh, when you are in a dry valley uh, with water. So, so. That is fascinating. Mm, the, isn't there anyone else that is interested that uh, you are working with, or you are? Uh, uh, in, in, Kazakhstan, I'm, or you in Kazakhstan, some... I'm working with uh, somebody else, but about Kazakhstan uh, sites. But in Kyrgyzstan, uh, no, no, unfortunately not. Okay, mm, because um, yeah, but and do you have the feeling that you have done like that you have seen most of the the carvings, the rock art, or do you have the feeling that there's more to discover? Uh, in any case, uh, there is more to discover, but um, I think that I already uh, did um, a very good average. Uh, of them, but uh, there are still some uh, regions I would like to explore. And, uh, I'm quite sure that I will find something there. Um, but uh, the main on the main sites I presented in the beginning, uh, uh, I mainly uh, documented them uh, already. But there are still uh, something to do there. Uh, so the area is really uh, big. Uh, it is you see uh, it is two thirds of Italy. And uh, in, in this, in, it is in mountains, it is on hills, uh, you have uh, uh, slopes and uh, small valleys everywhere. So, and uh, I work with my GPS, but, uh, but sometimes uh, after that, I, 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 I can see that uh, I forgot to document a, a part of the valley or something like that. Yeah, I see. Fantastic. So um, the Centro Comuno, as I, as I already told, the Luke Herman is uh, also um, making some connections with the area, some political connection with the area. So it, we will be happy to discover the region uh, ourselves. So we hope with your help somehow we have to we still have to organize that uh, that part um so there are no particular questions i think that um it's um i think we can close here uh, unless you have something that you want uh, to add um, no i just would like to to thank you once more for 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 this opportunity
and I hope uh, we will work together <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure we will. So thanks to everyone that has uh, followed us and that will follow us on uh, on the recording. Uh, so a great thank you to Lou Carman that did this uh, wonderful presentation. So now we we know some something more about uh, an area that it's not very commonly uh, presented. So thank you for that, and uh, see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye.